What is up coordinators and naturals? I am just a simple new type and in this video we're heading back to Earth in Cosmic Era 71 as we continue our deep dive of Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Astray R. Last time we dipped our toes into the Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Destiny Astray photo novel where Jess shot a photo that caused a lot of trouble. Also Lowe's Red Frame cosplayed as a goon as he found a giant meteor. In this episode we will head back into space and run into the new Gold Frame Amatsu. Lo will also say hold my beer and make a sword far bigger than the Gerbera Strait. So let's get into this. The Junk Guild are making their way across the desert. Kisato wakes up in the middle of the night to take a piss. When she heads back to her room, she sees someone. They are going through a George Glenn collectibles. She screams out in fear. Lo and Liam laugh at her. This has been happening a lot lately. She doesn't have any proof, so the crew teases her. The professor comes out looking haggard. She has been up all night doing research. She says, what have I been researching? I will never tell. And then she just disappears. The next night, Lo comes prepared with a device called the flexible blocks. It's like a backpack system composed of these block units that have different functions, such as an optical sensor, a smoke unit, and even an explosion, of course. Kisato says it looks heavy, but it is supposed to be used in space mainly. Around the corner, the two spot the ghost. They watch as it goes through the walls. Kisato and Lo follow it as it heads into the professor's room. The professor is talking to the ghost. This freaks out Kisato and she runs away and bumps into someone wearing a spacesuit. The man she bumps into runs away. Kisato is very confused, but Lo notes this person isn't a ghost and chases him. Lo gets into the red frame and the mysterious man enters his Jin Tactical Air Reconnaissance Type. The ZGMF Tar X1 Jin Tactical Air Reconnaissance Type, or Tar, is an experimental unit designed to further the development of the Din. It has a helmet and turbojet engines and transforms into a flight mode. The helmet contains a 3D sensor array. This unit could get in and out of places due to its Mirage Colloid tech. It is also equipped with an experimental close combat beam, assault rifle, and a 76mm heavy assault machine gun. As the two fight, Lo finds out that he is after the giant meteor that they pulled out of the sea. He tells Lo to hand it over. Liam comes rushing in to help Lo, but the professor says he will be fine. A man next to her says that he could lend her a hand. It happens to be George Glenn. Liam is very confused. George Glenn makes himself big outside of the ship. It confuses the gen pilot, allowing Lo to make his move. The professor says the GG unit is essentially George Glenn's brain. She created a hologram system that allows the GG unit to interact in real space. George Glenn says that he wants to remain a secret until he looks his best. Later, the team heads back into space using the mass driver system. In space awaits their new ship. Kenneth Lucini is talking to Guy of Serpent Tail. He tells Guy that the Junk Guild got a new ship and are about to head into trouble. He wonders why Kenneth is telling him this. He says he wanted to see how he would react. Meanwhile, everyone finally meets their new captain of the ship, the Rehome, George Glenn. For a breakdown of the Rehome, go see our coverage of the original Astray manga. George Glenn notes that the Gerbera Strait is starting to get dull. Lo tells George Glenn of Unno. They suddenly get a distress call. A Zaf battleship has been destroyed. They notice the culprit. It is the gold frame Amatsu. Kenneth tells Guy, the gold frame pilot, Rondo Gina Sahaku, is working for the Alliance. Lo tells him that he doesn't control the world. The gold frame disappears with its Mirage Colloid tech. It gets the upper hand on the red frame. The Rehome goes in to help. As the gold frame holds down the red frame, the Rehome fires missiles long enough for Lo to break free. He pulls out the Gerbera Strait and attacks Rondo, but he is able to destroy his sword. Everyone is in shock. That is when Guy in the blue frame second L comes in and helps him. Lo gets the upper hand and does damage to the gold frame. He tells Rondo that he doesn't deserve the gold frame based on how he treats machines. We cut to the graveyard. The junk guild finds it ominous how quiet it is. That is when Unno's dog Dempachi comes in. He looks sad. They follow him back to find Unno passed out. They get him to his home and get him some tea. Lo tells him to take it easy. He doesn't listen as the next thing he does is fight Lo. Lo is able to win the battle. While they fix the blade, Kisato wonders if Unno let him win. He tells Kisato the concept of Katsujinkan. One must start and kill the ego to follow the basics. He says that when this happens, the sword takes life in what is called the Setsuninto. Essentially, he is saying that Lo has went above and beyond his training since they last met and has become a master in his own right. 
That is Katsu Jinkin. Lo is able to sharpen the sword even better than he did last time. He also wants to make a new weapon with the meteor. The professor analyzes it before going through the smelting process. While eating desserts, Kenneth tells Elisa that Zaft is at a critical point at the war and they are going to want their meteor back. They will most likely be sending someone to take out the junk guild. The sword is finished. Lo used the entire meteor to make a giant sword bigger than the Gerbera Strait. It looks huge when in the hands of the Red Frame. Out of nowhere, a team of Gates bust in. Orguaze? If I remember correctly, I think we decided on Gates. Unno gets into his custom gin. He also has his own sword similar to the Gebera Strait. They begin shooting at Unno. He is able to use his sword and deflect most of the attacks, but some get through and he is shot. They demand to know where the metal is. Lo, furious, picks up the giant sword and slices through all of the gates. He goes to help out Unno. The old man says that he is happy that he returned before he died. He tells Lo to take all of the data of the artists and the craftsmen of the graveyard and delete it. He is happy that his sword skills will live on with Lo. That is Katsu Jinkin. Unno slowly passes away. The Eternal team has recently defected from Zaft and we are in need of supplies. As the Eternal links up with the Archangel and the Kusanagi, Watfield looks out to see his old Desert Tiger custom Baku. He refers to it now as a house cat. Outside is the retrofitted custom Baku that is piloted by Kisato. She is with the Red Frame and the Rehome. They are the ones helping out with the resupply. One thing to note about Kisato's custom Baku is that it is obviously retrofitted to work in space, but also the missile pod is replaced with articulating arms for junk gathering. Lo notes that you don't typically see an Alliance ship, Orb ship, and Zaft ship all in one place like this. He also says that wielding what they are dubbing the Gerbera Strait Volume 2 really messed up the Red Frame's arms. They have it mounted on the outside of the Rehome. Lo goes to talk to DaCosta. While they are talking, Watfield introduces himself to the Junk Guild. He thanks Lo for saving his life. Remember, when they met DaCosta on the Laseps back on Earth, DaCosta made Lo promise that he would safely deliver pods. Apparently, Watfield was hiding out in one of these pods. If you ever wanted to know how Watfield survived, well, here you are. I think I could have gone without a detailed explanation of how he survived. Leave a little mystery. They are done restocking the Eternal. They move on to the Archangel. The Rehome is built in a way that takes docking to a whole new level. The team meets up with Kojiro Murdoch, who is the chief engineer on the Archangel. While restocking, Lo notices freedom and wonders who pilots that thing. Finally, they head to the Kusanagi, where they meet the Astray Girls, Mayuda, Judy, and Asagi. These are the most adorable girls that get blown up. <laughs> While taking a break, Lo wonders to Liam if there was anything more he could do. He is just a junk dealer, but has seen people like DaCosta, Monda, and Unno sacrifice for what they believe in. He wonders if there is more he could do. Liam says that people should do whatever they can in any given situation. Yeah, great, thanks. I love neutral responses. They suddenly get a red alert. Enemies are approaching their location. Lo asks DaCosta if he should go out in his red frame. He tells him no and recommends that they take off. He thanks them for the supplies and says he promises to protect his ship. He recommends that Lo focuses on protecting the Rehome. Lo watches as Justice takes off and attaches the Meteor Unit. DaCosta tells him about the support unit. Lo is thinking about his broken red frame arms and not being able to wield the Gerbera Strait Volume 2. Seeing Justice and Meteor inspires Lo to make his mobile suit even stronger. He needs a support system of his own, like the Meteor Pack. Lo is caught up in creating a new support system for the red frame. Kisato doesn't want him to burn out. They make it to their next job. They have found another piece of debris from Junius 7. This is different from the one they encountered previously before heading to Earth. The professor tells them that this debris is en route to hit one of the plants. They plan on attaching rockets to the debris to redirect its course. They have four days to get the job done. The entire junk guild seem to be called out for this job, not just the rehome. Two days later, an old junk guild member named Narumi Wynn complains about Kisato working too slowly. He has his old man yells at clouds moment. She begins talking shit about Lo and calling him lazy. Kisato is like, oh hell no, you didn't just call my man lazy, did you? Lo challenges Narumi and says that if he does a better job in his red frame, he is taking his pickled fish. Kisato tells Lo to be careful, but lets her know that his new project is just finished. 
he launches in the red frame and power loader. The Gundam Mystery red frame with power loader mimics the Justice with the meteor unit. The red frame docks with the unit and it mimics all of its movements. The lower half of the unit can also be used by Kisato's Baku. It is equipped with the Beam Saber, the Grabera Strait, and the Volume 2 Grabera Strait. It also has an external connector for additional power. Lo is excited to finally use the power loader, but at that moment, one of the rockets on the Junior 7 Debris is going out of control. This is causing its course to get very close to the planet. Lo says he can handle this. Narumi and his men are trying to handle the situation. That is when Lo comes in and slices the entire colony in half with the Gerbera straight. The colony balances out. Liam wonders how Lo knew exactly where to slice. He says that he just took a wild guess. Liam is very concerned because if he was wrong, they would all be dead right now. Lo reproaches Narumi and tells him that he now has to respect him and takes his fish. Lo opens up the container and stinks the place up. He bites in and says that it isn't too bad. Later that night, the Junk Guild throws a party. And that will do it for this episode. We see the Junk Guild's involvement with the Three Ships Alliance. If you watch the remastered version of Gundam Seed, there is a blink and you will miss it moment where you see the three ships and the rehome in the background. I was hoping that Gundam Seed Freedom would give us more astray crossover, but that didn't happen. Next time, we will check out a side story happening with Guy and Serpent Tail. We will also learn more about Gene Carey. But that will do it for now, coordinators. Remember to try not to open fermented fish in a confined space. Peace.